Okay, I give you Global Village Trucking Company, all yours. In 1973, the BBC followed a rock group living in a commune in Norfolk with their families, roadies and managers. Their aim was to be self-reliant and to make it big without a record label. We actually thought we were going to change the world. I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to be a rock star. At home or on the road, they were determined to spread the message of Global Village Trucking Company. It's like there's stars in the sky. It was a given that what we were doing was just going to get bigger and, you know, loads of other people were doing it in parallel. Success followed when they recorded sessions for the BBC's John Peel and two albums. But it all fell apart. As I recall it, it was Mike who was the first one to say, look, I'm just standing up on stage again and I just can't think what I'm doing here. There was probably a shelf life for the band, if you like. It was destined to do what it did over a period of time. What happened next revisits the original film. We, I mean, all, all the chicks here are, are faithful and all that. Finds out what became of the group's members. The issue is just going to be about the size of the deal. And joins them as they reunite for their first gig in 30 years. I don't know if there's going to be about 50 people and a dog or whether there are going to be people flowing on to Leightonstone High Road, I don't know. When five young men decide to form a pop group, they don't usually set up house in a remote cottage in the wilds of Norfolk together with all their girlfriends. But the Global Village Trucking Company aren't an ordinary pop group. They're not very worried about making money, and they won't take any of the usual shortcuts to success. What they are determined to do is to make their own way without what they regard as the moguls of the record business, the promoters, the big managers, the professional manipulators. Global Village want to do it their way. Well, we're a rock and roll band with a difference. The difference being the fact that, that we live as a community of about 15 people, all of whom in their own ways contribute to the music which comes out, even though the final product is just five musicians on stage. Our whole household is a self-contained working unit, which includes all the people who help get the show on the road, like the roadies, the managers, and then all the people behind the scenes, like back at the house doing the domestic things. And it's all like a sort of great big family and a working team all in one, all pushing towards this end product of getting the music out. Like our aims are, are to make it, to, to, to get the music as good as possible and to get it out to as many people, but to enable that to, to support us in the way that we want to live and that the two are very, very closely connected and in terms of what we're trying to do. When you're doing something at the time, it just seems like the natural thing to do. You know, there was this, this, this rock and roll band, there were these people who were the sort of support system to the band. There was a philosophy and a lifestyle that we all wanted to embrace, and it all kind of just happened. It wasn't sort of mapped out on graph paper. It wasn't something that was planned in any sort of, you know, organised fashion. It was just you did what you did. We get a lot of feedback into the music from the, from the place we live in, which you wouldn't get, like in the city, you'd get sort of speedy and neurotic music. It's a more organic thing altogether, you know which comes out in the music, a much more relaxed atmosphere. So what, you mean so? I think it was 
a lot through convenience of the fact that if a band then you could live together it meant you could rehearse day and night if you wanted to but sometimes in actual fact the other people in the house might say oh god you can stop yet well we've decided it's a lot easier to be out in the country which is why we're living out in norfolk it creates a much more harmonic feel both within ourselves and with our environment like people always think in terms of the country as a place to, to go away to and do nothing. It's, it doesn't actually work like that with us at all because within this small space, under this roof, there's incredible energy going on. There's incredible determinism to do something which we all believe in. And um, it gets very hectic at times, like tempers get frayed and people say very heavy things to one another. But basically, it's, it's, it's great. Everyone in Global Village has their own responsibility to the group. Helga's in charge of the washing. The idea is that all should work and play together in peace and harmony. Don't tread too heavily on that bit going, of metal, Johnny, because you'll go right through it. Hey, Jimmy, do you know where the hole was? Well, That's look up and you can see the sky. It's all right, I can see it, yeah. Predictably, the women do most of the housework, while the men are expected to keep the place from falling apart. There's nothing revolutionary about the division of labour. Yeah, but I can't remember which bit it was. That's all right, George. Can't you see it? There's a hole. You can see the sky through it. If I cover up the hole, you will no longer be able to see it. Got it? The, the band is like a vehicle that, um, that provides a bit of momentum to keep us all together. Because if we were just a commune of people, that weren't really doing anything, didn't have very sort of sharply defined aims, we, you know, the whole thing might crumble around us, you know, but because we're all going in a direction and the band and the music and everything gives us that direction, um, we, we know it's not just going to disappear one day like that. Yeah, I can no longer see the sky. Great! We were prepared to try anything. What we knew, both in terms of the music and of the lifestyle, was that it, things didn't have to be the way they'd always been. You didn't have to um, live in a nuclear family situation. Uh, you could try communal living, and that was wonderful. Uh, um, I'd go back to that if it still existed. I'd love to live like that again. How much do the men help in the business of actually running the house? Well, we, uh, we have a rotation, and they're all supposed to do the separate jobs, the easy jobs, like cleaning the bathroom, which James helps Daniela do. Johnny's supposed to do the stairs, and we all have turns washing up every day, and we're supposed to keep the kitchen together on that day, do all the sweeping things. They, don't, they do help a lot around the house, like they, Johnny mends the roof, and he does the electricity, and if we didn't have him, he did all the wiring in this house which we'd have been lost with that. The way we derive our benefit from living together is by working together, because it helps give us a framework to operate in. See, right, we live we together have... because we love each other, and but that's not we are given a way you know? to love each other because we have to work with each other. It was the perfect blend, or could be the perfect blend, of spirituality and, uh, and rock and roll. That rock and roll was the voice it was what you did if you had something to say and something to change. I was very much a performer and a front man. Probably I got into trouble for being a front man and a performer rather than a good, actually, member of the commune. We're a commune band and we're all important because I actually quite like being a front man and entertaining. And um, you can't help that if you're the singer. Because the band are based on Norfolk, they have a strong local following. This gig in a disco under a Norwich pub attracts enthusiastic local support. You know, they're really earthy and they pull across the message of sort of generations today. And they're sort of happy go like lucky band, you know. And, you know, they just they create an atmosphere that everybody yeah. agrees with, you know. They, yeah. It's all also, classic. Out here, you know, in Norfolk, you know, you, you get you get you get put down, you know, because you're here 
but they they just create a local atmosphere, don't they? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. We just we just find them because they they they're, they're not. There's no hassles. There's no sort of pretense. <laughs> Home life in Global Village has the casual intimacy of an unusually relaxed family. A letter from a friend is like a letter home. James has just spoken to Joe on the telephone. What about the wedding? Yeah. Wedding. And the description the of... Uh... Congratulations to Jimmy and Freddie's, his mum and Mr... and everyone else who feels they need congratulating on this auspicious etc. The house was about 13 rooms, 11 of which were, were bedrooms. There was a kitchen and a music room and a bathroom and toilet. Every other room in the house was a, a bedroom because there were so many people living there. All my love, hair and fingernails, chocolate O dwarf and Wendy. <laughs> okay, I was 16, so I was quite a lot younger than most people there. We actually lived in the old coal hole. Yeah, yeah, we had the coal the hole, which wasn't <laughs> full of coal, but it was... Be. Was it? Yeah, it was a coal hole originally. Because mm. I remember I had to shovel loads of coal out of there. Oh, lovely, before uh, I be came. Before you came, <laughs> yes, before I went and got oh, you. Right. Oh, you to make <laughs> an effort clear all then, that out, absolutely. And then we moved next to the band room, which was horrific. It was a bigger nasty. bedroom. Yeah. That was the thing. Not much, but it was no, a bigger bedroom. But they played all night, and it was really, really noisy. The most annoying was Simon drumming. Yeah, that was because he he would yeah. practice, and Simon was just just drumming annoying, on his own yeah. exactly, and he was just going through his his rhythms, his doing his yeah. various rhythms all the time, his practicing, which did get annoying. Mike, should be more, should be able to go to The group find great strength in self reliance, not just emotionally, but right down to the most simple domestic tasks like making their own bread. Because our our society's got so big. Um, there's this great sense of impersonality, you know. You don't really feel like, like you're very close to someone. And if you're living with people all the time, you're very close to them all the time. Um, you, never, you never sort of feel this insecurity. Um, and a lot of people have this idea that people live in communes, they're, they're wild, degenerate hippies, you know. And they think, <coughs> I think they think they're not quite like human beings, you know. And I mean, every human being has this thing in them that um, eventually you know, part of their search for themselves and for a bit of security is, is pairing up with one person. I got away from my family at that time. Um, I was still quite young myself, I'd left home. Uh, I was still in touch with my family, but I felt, I felt a need to break out of um, a very comfortable suburban existence at that time um, and uh, discover some new things in the world. Um, and when you're in that phase of your life, you need to get away from your own family sometimes. Um, but you still need some support from people, so it was marvellous to find um, people who would, who would take over that role. The sort of stock image of the, of the commune, the one that we're all familiar with, is uh, this sort of scene of depravity and everybody sleeping with everybody else and sort of thing. I mean, how in fact does it work out? Well, we, I mean, all the, all the chicks here are are faithful and all that. I mean, you know, we all sort of, all the chicks never sleep with anyone else as far as I know. Well, I don't anyway. And um, all, the, all the unattached ones usually have chicks home from gigs or something. Not, not very often though. Friends, you, know, you know. They're, they're usually not... friends. They're, I mean, they're not, sort of, they're not sort of sordid or anything like that. They're really good friends who they happen to dig each other a lot and love each other. Not necessarily in the sort of the way you love your wife or you love your girlfriend, but in the friend's love way. And that they think it's a nice thing to do, you know. It's really nice. Vicky, do you think, as a mother with a child, that living with this community adds something there? Oh, yes, yes. Because, because well, we've got brothers and sisters, and, and he's got mothers and fathers, besides myself. And, and as he hasn't got an established father, he's... He can learn so much more from several just different fathers and mothers. At that time, it just felt how it should be. It just, there wasn't any question as far as I was concerned that that is how um, 
certainly I should live. I, I wasn't sure about the rest of the world, but it seemed such a good way for people to live and, and to share everything, to share everything. We all love him just mm. the same. Yeah. Yeah.